So let's focus on the obstetrics list. So if you look at the obstetrics list, the top column is uncomplicated deliveries. And this column is very important because anyone who comes in that's 39 weeks um, to four, uh, and uncomplicated goes into this column. So if they're a term delivery, they go into this uncomplicated delivery number and that they do not need to be represented on your case list. Meaning specifically spelled out with their G's and P's, any diagnoses, um, which they presumably wouldn't have any, but no just right. age. It's just you need X amount of uncomplicated deliveries, and you put that number in there. Right. So let me give you an example. I have an 18-year-old Gravita 1, Para 0. She was 39 weeks in one day, came in spontaneously ruptured, and delivered a 7-pound baby did not need Pitocin, had an uncomplicated delivery, had a second degree laceration I repaired. She does not need to go on the case list. She can go as a number in the uncomplicated deliveries. Got it. And we have an example of that upcoming. Right. The next thing to know for the obstetric case list is there's different columns. So the first column is the antepartum column. The next column is the delivery column. And then the column after that is operative procedures. And a lot of times people will confuse the antepartum and the delivery column. The most important thing to know is the antepartum column is anything antepartum to 10 centimeters. That's like how I like to organize it. So for example, if I had someone who had an arrest of dilatation and they were six centimeters and I placed an IUPC and I placed Pitocin, they had adequate contractions for four hours and they did not change their cervix and I called a C-section, I would say arrest of dilatation and I would put that diagnosis in the antepartum column. And a lot of times I see that put in the delivery column and delivery column would be perhaps a rest of descent because that would happen at 10 centimeters. The delivery column is anything that happens from 10 centimeters to six weeks postpartum. So your shoulder dystocia would go here, uh, your lacerations would go here, your postpartum hemorrhage or your postpartum depression, um, or if they were diabetic and you did a um, the, uh, any type of testing, that would go there in the delivery column. And then there's another column just for operative procedures. And it's important that anything that gets done, such as a fourth degree laceration, if you said fourth degree laceration in the delivery column, in the operative procedures, it's important to write repair of fourth degree laceration. So the columns correspond. On each of the case lists, there's steps. So the first step is to plan the format. We already discussed about organizing the patients into section and placing them in the best categories. This is important because there's so many different categories and a lot of patients will fit into multiple categories. For example, if you had a patient who was breech, but also had a postpartum hemorrhage, you could put her in the in either of the categories, um, and it depends where this patient would best fit. The second step is to summarize each patient and always put your complicated patients first. So say I had a postpartum hemorrhage and the patient lost six units of blood and I had to do a massive transfusion protocol, I would put that person, which is my complications, first off in the category. I'm not going to try and hide her. I'm going to present her out in the light because this is something important and I want the board to know I know how to manage a surgical emergency. The third step is really to think like an examiner. Am I demonstrating the standard of care? For example, if I have the breach category and I have two patients, I might want to place a patient that had an external cephalic version and delivered uncomplicated and not put her in my uncomplicated number up above and compare and contrast her with another patient that came in and had an external cephalic version that failed 
or who was breached and had a bicornuate uterus in which external cephalic version was contraindicated. And so I have two patients I can compare and contrast why my management differs. And I think that's important too, and it's also a study tool when you're studying for the exam. So here is the OB case list before and after. And one thing um, here is you can see the first category here is abnormal fetal growth. One thing I added on the operative procedures is I added anapartum testing, serial growth ultrasounds, and drug screen. And the reason I added this is the patient has is non-compliant with her anapartum testing. I didn't say she failed to show up for anapartum testing, uh, but I put it in more of a positive light saying non-compliance. And whenever you have non-compliance in late prenatal care, Sometimes it's important to know that we're screening for urine drug screen. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted the board to know that if I had IUGR, what the percentage was and what I was going to do to manage it. So I added this information in here. Um, and the other thing here is advanced maternal age. If I wanted to talk a little bit more about how I manage this, I could put operative procedures or treatment, genetic counseling. So, Diane, um, I guess, uh, so this is your suggestion, those additions in that um, third column on the, the after list, the urine drug screen, um, serial ultrasound, antepartum testing, to bring out the sorts of questions that you would want them to focus on and be likely to ask you about. Are you saying that the previous version on the left side of the uh, screen would be less than ideal but still acceptable? And I, I think the one on the left is acceptable, but if you actually read the ABOG, if you actually read the ABOG format, what ABOG is asking is that you're showing the standard of care. And it, this is, all, of course, my opinion, correct? Yeah. My opinion is the case list on the right shows more of the standard of the care than the case list on the left. That's why I added that in. I see. So when you're making your columns, antepartum, delivery or postpartum, operative procedures and or treatment, you want that snapshot to show diagnoses and that the diagnoses match up with treatments that demonstrate or prove the standard of care. Correct. And as you can see on patient number four here, what I've added is I've helped the examiner understand that this was a type 2 diabetes with a hemoglobin A1C of 8 and that this patient also had a fetal echo. Gotcha. All right. Okay. All right. 